Jeremy Bingham, uh, he is the CTO of and man behind the curtains at Daily Cost, and he's going to talk about surviving the 2008 elections. Thank Thanks for coming up. Uh, hello. I uh, hope we're all feeling good this morning. I am. So I'm talking about uh, you know, making it through the, the elections last year, because uh, Daily Coast is a large uh, progressive democratic weblog, and so it yeah, has a very cyclical traffic with, like, you know, usually, usually based around elections. <sighs> so, before the primaries were, and caucuses were starting, uh, some of the problems that we have would be like that the site would kind of randomly fall and tip over, which is no good. Uh, I had to be, you know, poking at it a lot to make sure that it wasn't uh, to try to keep it up and going, and and the and the pages just weren't, weren't would, wouldn't be loading fast enough. Uh, <coughs> uh, so I had to, you know, start and 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 work on uh, different different things. One thing I had to start on was MySQL. Because uh, we had a bunch of legacy tables that had been designed. Actually, the, they, they, were, they were taken from an ancient version of Slash from like nine years ago. So we had a lot of things like 20-byte var cars as the primary key on the tables, or on the, on the stories table. And like the comments were as a 20-byte var car plus an integer for the primary key. And you can see that this would kind of start to have problems after a while. So I had to tear up the, like the stories table and the comments and change everything to an auto-incrementing integer. And but then also, you know, work it so that the, the old URLs would still be compatible with, with, the, with the new scheme. Uh, there was a lot of MySQL 3.23-isms, like littering the, around the code everywhere. So you have a lot of, like, uh, a lot of code that would do a select to see if something was in the database or not, and then update or insert as needed. Uh, so I, you know, I had to go and clear all those out. Uh, you had things that just weren't there for any good reason. Like, uh, in the, we have to archive uh, the old, old stories and comments because the, the table was getting, getting too big. And like at one point, I had full text uh, indexes on the, the stories table. And I assumed that there was a reason for it, and there wasn't. And I realized this was becoming a problem when I looked and I saw that the data was only about 9 gigabytes, but the index was about 17. And then it became a bit of a problem because then there wasn't uh, space on the disk to, you know, uh, alter the table in place. So that was, that was a big adventure there. <laughs> when I, well, during the Iowa caucus, which was the first, like, big night of, of the, the primary season, I had written in 2006, I had set something up to cache, to, to write, like, the, the front page stories to disk. And that worked great. Uh, so anonymous users could just get the page off the disk, and it would be fabulous. Uh, in 2008, I had expanded the use of memcache from what was using in 2006. So I had to keep all the, the, uh, the clocks on the servers synced up well. And it turned out that then during Iowa, every five minutes, the site was being brought to its knees because they'd, all the servers would be updating their, their, their cache at once. And so everything was starting chunk, 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 chunk until, it, until it got done. So this is no good. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I took my, my trusty copy of K&R, because it was the only C book I have, and over the weekend learned how to write Lua functions in C and hacked in memcache support to mod magnet. So then I was able to stick pages for anonymous uh, users in a memcached and then serve them directly from Lighty uh, without ever having to hit mod Perl, which helped immensely. And then eventually, I ended up writing a new module that would, would take pages, put them into memcached, gzip them up if they were too big to fit in the memcached buckets. And like I said, it reduced the server load uh, just immensely uh, because anytime you have to like hit mod Perl, you know, it was just the, just the even overhead of starting it up, you know, it was uh, best to be avoided if possible. Uh, another thing that I did was 
uh, we'd been running some some old older hardware. We had like the, these ten ten dual Xeons, and they each had two gigs of RAM. The uh, oh, misspelled Opteron there. We had two Opterons with eight gigs of RAM and two 73 gigabyte uh, disks, like one for the OS and one for the uh, for the database, database files. You know, we had an image server, we had a memcache server, we had old 411 FreeBSD search and SMTP server that somebody had set up with an 88 megabyte uh, root partition, so I couldn't upgrade any further. And it's finally out of service now, it's sitting in my office, because uh, like one of the disks went, but it was like, keeping me up at nights for a while. Uh, you know, each of the web heads, they were all their, their own thing, so anytime I made any changes, I had to be copying them around between, you know, 10 servers, and there's always a little nerve-wracking and time-consuming. So, we ended up upgrading, so we got six quad Xeons with uh, eight gigs of RAM. They each have, like, the local disks. We have the two octa-core Xeons for, for the database with, you can see, like, the RAID and the dedicated temp disk, and... Uh, consolidated a bunch of stuff together. Nice thing with the webheads is that we have, they, they, they net boot and have an NFS root uh, that they, they all share so we can add new machines uh, if we need to. So for like election day, I ended up adding three. So it was for a total of nine for election day. And they just, you know, they pop right in, they you know, set up their swap space and, and come right up and it's uh, yeah, pretty smooth and nice. How did it end up working out? You can kind of see like the, the traffic in years past and then how it ended up uh, for 2008. 2008 is the blue line. You see it started, you know, kind of going up in August and then September and October is when it, when it got really big. Actually, some of our biggest, uh, one of our biggest days was actually when Sarah Pale had made her uh, like acceptance speech at the RNC. Actually, it ended up being way, like, way bigger than, than the DNC or any of, any of the days of that because people liked to talk about her. They'd like to talk about her a lot. <laughs> and she provided things to talk about, so it worked out nicely. <sighs> and at you know, the election day itself, uh, as I had done the, the heavy lifting to, to get the site working pretty much between January and April, so by the time Pennsylvania rolled around, uh, it had pretty much had everything in place, and it actually was pretty smooth sailing after that. Uh, we had a, an electoral map that was running Flash that, that people could click on and see like live results coming in. There were some problems with that. Uh, one being that we didn't, nobody noticed that it was on a 100 megabit switch, and it had never been a problem until, uh, until that day. <laughs> And it was maxing it out because it was like uh, the, the files would be updating a bunch, uh, you know, for like you know the feed from the AP you know, with the XML files for the election results but by state. Uh, so it was pushing, I think, like 800 megabits a second or something, uh, ridiculous. So I had to, uh, that had to be upgraded like right away. Uh, uh, you see here, like the load was usually on the servers was between by 0.5 and 1.8. I think a couple of times it got close to three. Uh, but didn't really ever get higher than that. I think our worst problems was the map was the map had problems and like uh, the ads would were, were getting hammered, so, so sometimes they'd slow down. And uh, but yeah, other than that, it, it uh, actually ended up going surprisingly well. And I got to keep my job and all as well. Uh, thank you.